Go, my little creepy robot, clean my pool. Chief, where have you been? Where have you been? You haven't made a video in over a week. You're right, I haven't. And the reason for that being is my work schedule changed. And because of that, my sleep schedule's been off and I've been trying to get used to that. And then, so I just haven't had the time to make a video. But here's a new one. Now, two videos ago, I made one that was called what power mods you should do first. And people down in the comments, I don't think understood that. So I just want to clarify that. That was strictly for power. Now anybody who knows the very second grade basics of physics knows that just because you have power does not mean your car is fast. So in this video, let's go over some supporting mods that will make you effectively put that power down and make your car run as best as possible. And the number one thing that I can say, and I can't stress it enough, the number one modification you can do for this car, actually for any car, is yourself. A lot of people think that they're the best drivers in the world. That's not true. You have to learn your car. You have to learn how to drive your car. For perfect example, I had that experience with my RX-8 when I went to an autocross and I signed up for a school. And I thought I was pretty fast, you know, I did two or three autocross events in the past, you know, and I'd, I'd do well. But my instructor had an RX-8 and he drove my car to show me how it was done and he went so fast, I couldn't believe that my car was that fast. And he did it so smoothly, there was no uh, like tire noise or anything. No tire roll, scrub, like you know, chirps or anything. It was so smooth. And I know that the same thing happened to Danny when he went to his auto course, uh, autocross course. There was a completely stock speed three there. That was running 49 second lap times. That was not only way faster than him, whose car is modified, but was a lot faster than a lot of cars there. So you need to learn how to drive your car first. Now if you feel like bolting something on that will perform well and help you learn your car a little better, it would be the rear motor mount. It's, you know, $120, $130 part. It's two bolts, easy to put on, can be done in about 10 minutes. And what that does is it essentially keeps your motor moving front to back very limited because this car came with stock Mazda 3 mounts, which are pretty weak. So you stiffen that up, it helps a lot with the wheel hop because your motor isn't moving on the mount so much the wheels stay a little bit more planted. Although, you know, you, you still will have some, but it fixes it quite a bit. And also increases your uh, throttle, um, your throttle response a little bit as well. Another really easy, short, inexpensive little supporting mod you could do is get a short shift plate kit, although that has its pros and cons. Pro is that it's cheap, easy to install, and it does shorten your throw quite a bit. Con is that because it manipulates the cable, uh, the cable will actually stretch a little bit and is prone to making it a little bit sloppy and they could snap. And a lot of people, especially if they get the, uh, I've seen this more common with the JBR short shift plate, that from going from second to third, they always grind, which is, yeah, a lot of people can't do that shift anyway, but they always grind, grind the gears. I've never had that problem because I know, I know how to shift properly, but uh, some people don't. The next one probably is going to be the passenger motor mount. Now this is probably gonna be the most expensive part in this list I'm giving. You know, this is within budget though. I'm not going crazy and I don't wanna spend, you know, three, four thousand dollars on this list here. You know, because a lot of people who have the Speed 3 are on a budget. This isn't a particularly expensive car. It's it's uh, thrills for pretty cheap. So, you know, I'm not spending a lot of money on this, you know, for, 
to keep this a budget car. But uh, the passenger motor mount, definitely that increases the uh, the handling actually of the car quite a bit. Now you will get a lot of cabin vibration from this uh, upgrade. Um, it is, you know, the, the rear motor mount keeps it from going laterally. This one goes up from going horizontally. And uh, it, it's rough, but the benefits are definitely worth it. Some people will say to get an EGR block off plate, but uh, just just unplug your, your EGR. Just, just unplug it. It does the same thing. There's no need to get a plate. Sure, you might throw a check engine light, but hey, it, you don't have to pay anything. The next thing is a lot of people want to get a suspension for this car pretty soon and get it lower. Uh, suspension is really up to you. It depends. Once again, that's the subject of what you want the car to do. If you want to sit pretty, you can get you know cheaper coilovers. If you want to perform, you can go for a little bit of the intermediate advanced coilovers. You know, preference is up to you guys. But uh, one thing you have to immediately get when you do that is uh, rear camber arms because the stock ones are fixed and you can't adjust the camber so you will prematurely wear out your tires as well as not get maximum grip without having the ability to change your camber. So go ahead and get a pair of those. And then this next one, I know a lot of people are gonna argue that this might be the second and third thing you should get, and that is a rear sway bar. A stiff rear sway bar makes this car actually a lot different than it already is. Uh, it handles a lot differently, and it's funny because you actually start getting some lift off oversteer. You act a little bit more like a, a Ford Focus ST than anything else. So all these items that I've just listed are things you can pick up for relatively cheap that will increase the handling, increase you know the power output of your car, and by power output I mean putting the power effectively down at the wheels. It also help your throttle response just a little bit. Now, the list of things you can do is really endless to support the power. You know, uh, obviously getting new tires is a great one because the stock tires and cheaper tires just don't really you know help you that much obviously uh, lighter and wider wheels you know all there's there's the list can go on but you know it depends on how much money you really have so you know it, it's all it's all up to you guys um, what you want to do with the car I just thought I would spout out the pretty much the most common modifications that are done to help the power output. By the way, boys, I did get my mud flaps in and my camera is slowly moving from all the shaking. That's awesome, I noticed them moving there. However, I don't want to install them just yet because I want to show you guys and a lot of other people out there that you don't need a four wheel drive car to necessarily have mud flaps be functional. So it's going to rain next week, and I'm gonna drive without the mud flaps. I'm gonna show you the splatter of just normal rain on ground, how it hits the body. And then there's supposed to be like a two week break. I'll install the mud flaps then, get the car clean, and then it's supposed to rain again, and then I'll have the mud flaps on and see the spray, the spray difference on there so you guys can see the difference. So that's gonna call this short little ranting video and just another little list of things you can do to the Speed 3. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget, together to the top, Magic Cars.